has been a little bit difficult for me and not because I'm doing some massive decluttering in my closet and my three kids closets it's because I look around at all these other homes all these other videos all these Instagram pictures and I fall into the comparison trap you know the saying the grass is always greener on the other side well in this video it's time to look down water my own dang grass and get this project started now decluttering videos are always the hardest for me to do and post and I even went back and forth on how much I was going to share because I always get the most pushback on these types of videos. But it's like seeing someone maybe a little overweight going to the gym and expecting them to have a six pack the next day. And even if they did magically have a six pack the next day, it would not be sustainable unless they worked at it a little by little over time. And sometimes even in real life, not everybody wants to cut everything out of their diet to maintain that perfect six pack. Sometimes you wanna eat cake every once in a while and you're okay with those five extra pounds. So that's where I'm at with my decluttering journey. So in today's video, I'm working on my own stuff in my closet, in Rye's closet, who is five months old, and also in my girl's closet, who are five and three. So what you can expect in this video is lots of progress, not necessarily perfection, and I have lots of tips to share. Some I got from a magazine, some I got from a post on Facebook in my Get Organized group, and I wanna share all of these different tips and tricks because I don't think that decluttering is a one size fits all. Um, it's more of a what fits for you. And all of the experts will suggest all different kinds of tips and tricks, but not all of them work for everyone. So I'll throw out a bunch of really interesting tips that I have read over the last few weeks, and that way you can pick and choose which one works best for you. If you're new here, I'm really glad to have you here. My name is Michelle. I'm a mom of three kids, five and under, and about a year ago, I did a mass declutter in my closet. I'm back again this time, not only doing my closet, but doing my kids' closets and dressers as well. In my videos, I have a little bit of a different approach. Instead of always getting you to clean your house or declutter your clothes and tell you all the benefits of that, I like to help you work on your mindset so that you then feel encouraged to get the things done that you wanna get done. I don't think that your worth in life is defined on how clean or organized your home is. I think so. It's defined on the type of person you are, the connections that you build with others, the encouragement you have, the time you get to spend with your kids. And, and that's what I'm here to do. Build a connection. We're in this together. And I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and stick around. But let's go ahead and get started. Let me feel your love again. Cause I've been running round in circles screaming out your name Take me to a different place Just the two of us and we can stay up all night Kissing under street lights so my goal in my closet today is to mainly go through the rest of my maternity clothes and get rid of anything that could pass as maternity. 
Um, I have a big clear tub that I need to give back to a friend to donate and then I have a whole nother box of maternity clothes to get rid of. Now once I finish getting you know fitting into the rest of my other clothes that's when I will go through try on stuff and then do another mass declutter but for today it is mainly just lots of maternity clothes and then a few other stuff. So let me take you back a little bit and tell you a little bit about my like decluttering past, which kind of was non-existent. Um, when I was younger, I moved a lot. I lived in several different apartment complexes. In fact, um, my whole high school, I shared a room with my older sister as a teenager in a two bedroom apartment. So we didn't have a whole lot of stuff. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of clothes, I guess you could say maybe kind of average. Um, but in that sense, I never really did a ton of decluttering just because there wasn't a whole lot. Um, there was no concept of minimalism or anything like that. Um, as I got older, Chris, my husband and I purchased a home. Everything we had was hand-me-downs. We had like one couch, one coffee table and TV in our living room for the longest time. Um, and then also a hand-me-down dresser. So we didn't have a whole lot of stuff. We lived in that home for five years before we built the home that we're in now. And we have been here for almost eight years and it's the longest home that I've ever lived in in my entire life. It went from kind of just me because Chris used to work out of town during the week and then he would come home on the weekends until that just lifestyle didn't work for us anymore. And we changed it, he got a different job. And I still never really had a decluttering routine because there just wasn't a whole lot to declutter. And like I said, I, there was no minimalist, like I didn't strive to be minimalist. We just did had what we had and that was it. Um, as our home grew, as Chris started staying home a lot more, our family grew like we had three kids in the last five years. The amount of stuff we've accumulated just became a lot. And I had no habit. I had no routine or anything like that um, until COVID hit, right? So when COVID hit and also I was very career focused. I did not, I was not focused on cleaning my home. I was focused on my career and that was more important to me than like having an extremely clean home 24 seven. Um, also I'm not high on conscientiousness. So a couple of weeks ago I talked about like different personalities and how your different personalities can define how you know structured you are how there's genetics involved in it environment involved in it and so forth so i'm not super high on the conscientiousness chart which is like very clean very planned very organized um so i have to work on on it a little bit so after covid hit is when i started you know that's when you kind of you, you're home a lot so you're like okay well what can i do that would make me more efficient so that's kind of where my decluttering ish cleaning organizing ish journey started where i didn't know these little baskets these little bins even existed i just never thought about spending money to put things in a bin to put them in another bin to put them in a drawer but as many of you guys say the less you have the less you have to manage and if you choose to have a lot of stuff like me then you might as well organize it so that's when I decided to buy the bins and the baskets in the containers and give this whole organizing thing a shot. I started in the girls room trying out the KonMari method. I think my biggest fear was that I wouldn't be able to maintain the folding style, but I bought the bins, I did the KonMari method, and then I've continued ever since. I next moved on to, at the time Savannah was my youngest, I moved on to her room. Re bought the bins, did the organizing KonMari style in her room before moving on to my clothes. Lastly, I finished with Chris's clothes, which I'm reorganizing here again. And this horrible broken dresser, every time I pull it out, the whole drawer falls down. If you can't tell and I'm like holding it up, it's because we have kept it because we're like, oh, we're going to redo our closet. And then we have yet to do that so we just are redoing our bathroom now if you've 
kind of been following along, you know that. And this closet project was supposed to go along with it. All the IKEA, the whole IKEA pack system, we are supposed to like get this custom closet and build it, is still all out of stock. So, but long story short on that, we haven't fully made a decision. So until then, we can just keep coming back here, try to declutter and keep it as organized as possible so that whenever we do make the decision, the transition will be a little easier. So next I'm going through all of Chris's pants and work jeans and you know all of them just kind of piled up on this shelf is not aesthetically pretty so I had bought these specific organizing cubes for like thicker clothes like these um, jeans and pants. I had been asking him for over a week to come through the closet and he needs to do another more thorough declutter. and he didn't so I am going to consciously make the effort to go through some of the pants I don't think he's gonna wear anymore and the ridiculous amount of socks that he has and put them in a trash bag and then he can if he decides to go through them and take out what he wants he can do that if not then it's going to the donation pile so it's not that he won't declutter it's just getting the time to say you need to stop what you're doing come over here and go through all of these clothes. I think that was always my issue as well is making a conscious effort to actually do it. So here in just a second, these are the cubes that I purchased off of Amazon. I have the ones that go in your dresser. These are a little bit taller and they have bigger spaces. So it fits six items. Um, I've seen people put like um, heavier sweaters and stuff in here and then this is what I'm going to be using for his jeans one it came with in a pack of three um, and six little slots so I'm going to use one for more of like his going out jeans and one for more of work pants work jeans um, in my la in my last declutter video of the closet I had some people comment like Chris's clothes still has like all of these tags on it he doesn't even wear them um, so whenever he worked for the gas company and here it looks so much better than just like piling up all unorganized but he works for a gas company and they um, provide the employees with fire safety clothes so he actually had a whole ton of work clothes that were provided to him from work and then when he quit his job there they just never got used. So it's, it's. I know you guys, a lot of people are like, y'all waste so much money and there's all these tags. Well, you, you don't know the whole story, but I don't ever think to, to mention, I don't know if that's important or not, that um, his work provided him clothes and he no longer works there. But now we're going through um, donating some of those items. So next I'm moving on. These are the girls' pajamas. They have their pajamas in our room because they'll take a bath in our bathtub where I can watch them and then they just hop over here and grab some pajamas. So that's that's that. They have a lot of pajamas. Um, the way that I fold them is KonMari, and then I bought these organizing cubes to keep them together, and then they can come in here, pick whichever ones they want. They can easily see them. And um, what I'm doing is going through the ones that are too small, so that anything that's like 2T and under is going into a donation pile. And then I'm kind of moving them around since they can kind of both fit into 4T. So Sailor's 5 and a 5T. They can both kind of fit into 4T. And then Savannah is 3T. Um, I have a little bit of extra because I just have different, all different sizes that, that fit right now. I'm not gonna play nice. I'll be the witch you tell your friends about.
As I mentioned earlier, I had gone through all these socks, like the full intention of him doing this decluttering with me for this video, but it just didn't happen. So I'm gonna go through some of the socks I don't think that he needs anymore. If they have holes in them, I'm going to throw them away and everything else, if there's like way too many of a certain pair of sock, then I'm just going to put them in the white trash bag, which is going to donation. All of the great organizing bins you see there came from a pack from Amazon where it comes in three different sizes, the larger bin, the medium bin, and then a smaller bin that I, I don't use those ones as much. I mainly just use the large one and the medium one. And then any of the ones you may see in there that are white are from Ikea. If you're contemplating spending money on cubes and was a little hesitant like I was in the beginning, um, it is a game changer. I have them for everyone in our home. I didn't start off that way. Like I mentioned before, I started just in one area and then slowly moved on to each person in the house. But all of these clothes you see here are ones that I am donating and decluttering as well as the huge tub and the box full of the rest of my maternity clothes. So once I finish up here, I'll show you some before and afters, but I would say the organizing made a huge difference in this space and the decluttering I'll continue to work on a little bit each month. I feel the warmth of your skin. I feel the touch of your hand. Love you with all of my heart. Makes me tremble within. Next, I am moving over to Rye's room. So Rye is my six month old. And right now, all of his stuff is pretty organized. If you hadn't seen like our nursery video or have been following me for a while, we, I was given so much baby clothes, like all the way up until like my sister-in-law gave me clothes up until like 40. So I have a ton of clothes. My mom helped me go through and organize a lot of the clothes that were given to us. Um, and then in these drawers, so my, the top two drawers are all zero to three months. And then the bottom two drawers are all three to six months. So I am don't, um, actually I'm giving it to a friend who just had a baby, um, all of the clothes and because it's all organized, it's so much easier to just put in a box and give it to her. And then the next thing I'm going to be doing is going through all of the clothes that are like six months and plus, and then filling up the new clothes there. Rye is our last baby, so I can gladly donate all of the clothes once he's grown out of them. As for when I had the girls, I would hang on to everything because I didn't know if we should save it, if we were going to have another baby, if it was going to be a girl or not. So um, I can finally start going through and then just donating it right off the bat.
these are the two boxes of clothes that I'm donating this time around. And then I'll start going through the tubs of six month and older clothes, pulling out some of the winter clothes and then organizing them into the organizing bins that I have there. But I told y'all that I would give you some tips of things that I've recently read that I thought were helpful and maybe you can incorporate them into your decluttering journey as well or pick and pull the ones that resonate with you the most. So my mom gave me this article from a magazine and I don't even know what magazine it's from, but she was like, here, you talk about this kind of stuff. Maybe you want to read it. So it was like minimize your stuff. And the author is Liz Clearman, but she had like 10 tips, um, not all of them resonate with me but I'll just kind of read through them and put my kind of perspective on them but tip number one is more like getting like in order to help declutter yourself is that you would ask yourself would I take this with me if I was moving my problem in the past with moving is that I would just dump everything into a bin so I wouldn't go through it but that could be a good question to ask yourself when going through your stuff the second one she says is do you use it, love it, and need it? And if you answered yes to any of those questions, then you would keep it. The third tip was to get rid of the guilt of decluttering things that other people have given to you. Now I had to think about this one and it kind of depended on who gave it to me that I do get guilt of getting rid of things that I feel like the closest people in my life have given to me because it's like, if I feel like I get rid of it, that means that I didn't appreciate it, but that is far from the truth. But if it's not like a super sentimental item, then I can look at it as it's, it's used its purpose, I've appreciated it, and now it can go to someone else who would also appreciate it. Our fourth tip was to embrace minimalism, and you guys know how I feel about minimalism. I don't disagree with it. I just don't know if I can fully live to that standard. But once I read her tip about it, um, she kind of is like minimalism isn't doesn't necessarily mean that there's just empty white plain walls, no sense of character one small couch, maybe three shirts total, no color or character or decor, which that is what I think of when I do think of minimalism. But I do like her theory on it. And she basically said that there is no single version of minimalism. You only have in your home the things that make you happy. So I liked her concept and her version on it that your journey is going to be different from my journey. My version of minimalism is going to be different from your version. And you may be farther along on your journey than me. But the cool thing is, is that we're all trying. We all have our own versions of it. We're all trying to make our own spaces manageable. What might bother you more may not bother me as much. What might bother me more doesn't bother you as much. So we're all different and we can all embrace it in our own unique way. Her tip five is uh, she said she got from the minimalist um, recommendation and it's called the just in case mindset and embrace the 2020 rule. I haven't heard of this one, but I have heard of another, another version. I'll tell you in just a second. So this rule is basically saying that sometimes you look at something, you're like, Oh, I might need this just in case. Um, she refers to it like as a kitchen gadget. I refer to it as my clothes. I have seasonal clothes or like, let's just say a dress. And I'll be like, Oh, I might need this just in case. Um, I go somewhere fancy and you know, sometimes that never happens, but her theory is saying, or like the minimalist theory is saying that ask yourself if you can buy it again within 20 minutes and for less than $20, chances are you can, so you can pass it. And then if you ever need it again, then you can purchase it. The other tip is from Dana K. White. She is a famous YouTuber here. Um, you probably, I assume if you're watching decluttering videos, you probably have heard of her. I know of her channel, but one of the things that res resonated with me from her channel was what would be the price for me to replace this if I in fact ever needed it. So she had an example, like she pulled out googly eyes from a craft drawer and she's like, I didn't even know I had these. And then she was saying like, whether you're thinking, um, and it was like an unopened pack. So it's like, do you, do you, um, 
declutter it or do you keep it? You know, and you would ask yourself like, where would I go to find this if I needed it? And then what would be the price for me to replace it? So if it's like, you know, three or $4, then she's like, okay, I don't need these. I probably will never use these. And if I ever needed it, then, you know, it'd be three or $4. So that kind of reminded me of the same concept of the like under $20 rule. But there are some things, um, especially with clothes that I know that I was going through that, I, that I was thinking, you know, this is a nice fancy dress. And I purchased this for a wedding, maybe a long time ago. And I am never going to probably wear this again. So it's over, um, it's over, you know, $20. But I have to kind of think to myself, I don't want to hang on to it. But if I were invited to a fancy event, which I know doesn't happen any that often in this season of my life, then I would be really excited to get something new. So I do remember that's one of the things I thought of um, the first time around when I did a major decluttering and I was getting rid of a lot of like fancier dresses but it reminded me of a similar concept. So her tip number six was, you deserve to have clothes that fit you now. So if they don't fit you now, get rid of them. Now, I am in a little bit of a limbo. I may disagree with this a little bit because I am postpartum. And just real quick, I'm moving on to the girl's bedroom. So the two middle drawers are sailor's drawers. So on the left side, we have all of the long sleeve and a couple short sleeve shirts. Since it's winter outside, I have more of the long sleeve stuff out. And then on the right side is all of the long pants. And then I'll put some of her um, school uniforms in there. And then on the bottom, same thing is just Savannah's clothes. My goal here is to go through the closet, um, go through the dresser, get rid of everything that is 2T and under. But as I was saying about um, her tip number six, that if the clothing fits you now, if it doesn't fit you now, then get rid of it. Uh, I, the reason why I disagree with this one in my life right now is because my clothes don't fit me right now because I'm six months postpartum. I'm about 10 pounds away from my goal weight, so they do not fit me 100% comfortably but i'm not going to get rid of all of my my whole entire wardrobe um right now i'm going to i have a couple clothes that are kind of in limbo but i think once i get back down to my goal weight my clothes fit me really well then i'll go through and get rid of everything that i don't like anymore so again these tubs in here are all 2t and under I kind of had been saving them to give to um, some people I know who have had a daughter, but I need to get rid of all of it now. I can't save it and wait for, you know, the kids to grow and then give it to them when it's, it's the right time. I need to go through it now. I have one big tub here that is going to be clothes that are sailors that are getting passed down to Savannah or that are seasonal, like Christmas dresses that I know will fit them next year. Um, and also I have some summer clothes in there that are also going to Savannah. So I bought a couple more organizing cubes. Like I said, these ones are also from Amazon and I'm going to go through, I like the bigger ones better. So that's why I'm going to kind of switch through some of those, the medium sized ones and move them into the bigger cubes and then reorganize that top section. So that's my goal in this room. But as I'm doing this tip number seven, don't buy storage containers until you know what you're storing. So do all of your decluttering first. Don't waste your money on accidentally overbuying storage containers or buying wrong sizes, etc. So it makes sense, right? This is a big one. This is the one some someone will comment to me like almost every video. The less stuff you have, the less you have to organize and maintain. 100% correct. I've even had someone say, why are you organizing? You just need to get rid of everything and then you don't have to organize. I'm like, well, that's kind of not where I really, I, wa I want some stuff. So I'm okay with organizing it. Um, I feel like having it organized makes it easier to maintain, but right, the less you have, the less you have to organize. So hence why I'm here trying to get rid of stuff, trying my best, right? That's all we can do is our best. Tip number nine, save all your sentimental stuff for last. If it's harder for you to get rid of those stuff, then wait till the end to go through it. And then her last tip is to watch people and listen to some of the experts. 
So let me know which one of those resonated with you the most. I think that the one that resonated me with the most is that everybody's version of minimalism is a little bit different. And the less you have, the less you have to maintain. So I'm constantly trying to think about that when going through and getting rid of stuff. Clothes are my absolute weakness, but I'll get there one day. I've been going out on my head. I've been waiting for someone to give me help. All I'm asking for is just some space and some time. Then I'll be alright. I've been having thoughts in my mind. I can't get up. Tell me things I can't say myself. From you and nobody else. Everything is out of my sight. This is awesome. Last fall, I was invited to speak at the Get Organized virtual conference, which was a huge success. And I talked about how to get motivated to clean and get stuff done when you lack motivation. And within that, I joined the Get Organized virtual Facebook group. And just recently, somebody posted the question or the admin actually posted the question that said, what advice would you give someone who is just starting to declutter? So there was a ton of amazing comments from people who had given suggestions. And then if you have suggestions as well for someone who is just starting to organize, um, you can also leave them below in my comments as well so that people can read those. And I wanted to just read a couple of them uh, to see if that could help as well. So here we go with just some of the suggestions. They say, do a little bit every day and don't give up. I feel like that's where I'm at right now. I want to do a little bit and I just want to keep going and not give up. Um, someone says, don't start a declutter, start a daily maintenance. So that's where they failed. If they would try to do a big declutter, it didn't work. But as long as they like worked at it every single day, then that's where they started seeing progress and maintenance. Um, um, someone said it doesn't come overnight. It'll take time. Um, it'll take a process because you know, you have to maintain it. So I totally feel that one as well. Um, someone said, get an accountability buddy and encourage them, encourage them each day to try and get some things done. Uh, think about how many years it took to get your home decluttered. So don't expect it to be all uncluttered in a month or a day or one time reading these comments makes me feel so good um i'm always like i said i'm always scared to post these because i get attacked by people for not having like a perfect home and i think that some people expect it to be perfect and i'm a i'm a real human and i post my real life so um it's definitely been a you know, process for me as well. So someone else said, set a timer, you know, that way you have a start and stop time. Don't give up. Um, someone said, just pay for it. Don't do it yourself. Hire someone to come and do it all. Um, someone said, don't compare your progress to others. Just use it to get inspired. Um, someone kind of says, don't underestimate small increments. 15 minutes a day over a month can make, you know, a day or month can make a huge difference. Someone says, you know, start with the most visible areas first, like your living room, your kitchen, um, and stuff like that. You know, at, whenever I read the home edit book, they, they said to start in your storage spaces. So like your closets, your attics, your basements, because when you start into those main areas, then you need, you need, like if you have overstock and you need to store some of those important things away, then you'll have your storage spaces available to store those items. So just different ways to think about that. Someone said, once you decide, once you have your trash pile, your donate pile, then don't go through those items again and don't start pulling stuff out. Someone said, focus on one shelf at a time. Don't overstress yourself. Start with just the trash first. If you don't know what to donate, then just go through everything that is going to be trash, baby steps, 
do one room at a time, finish one space before moving on to the next space. And then so many suggestions that are just saying, be kind to yourself, give yourself grace, baby steps, you can do it, just get started. So so that is just such some valuable advice. If you, any of you guys have went through or currently are in the process of your decluttering journey, you can always feel free to comment down below. How did you get started? What helped you get through it? What advice would you give to someone else who is struggling? And obviously know that you're not alone. I lose my breath whenever I see you. You stole my heart. What is it that you do? My life was great till you added color. It feels so good to have gone through everyone in our entire home's clothes, especially all the the kids' clothes because they grow out of the clothes so fast that it's like you have to constantly be decluttering and getting rid of. The organizing bins have been so effective for me to categorize. I do not color code. That's a little bit too much upkeep. I've tried it, it doesn't work. I just feel like categorizing light clothes together, pants, sweatshirts, um, sweaters, long sleeve, short sleeve, works way better for me than to also maintain color coding. But I'm so glad that this process is finally done, at least for now. I hope that you enjoyed and got a few tips from today's video. This is all of the stuff of the kid clothes, kid shoes that I am no longer holding on to. I'm finally getting rid of the tubs of clothes and shoes, um, donating it to somebody who will need it. And then I have some space in my closet, but subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and next project will be the kitchen, but I hope to see you guys all next week. I'll be with you too.